welcome back and uh, I hope that uh, you got some time to spend on the last class which is Mayer's theory which is a formidable class. We are this is the second time we are doing it. First time we do it a little bit more detail, but it is a very difficult th uh, thing and we I decided to um, review it uh, once more. Mm -hmm. so, along with the revision of the atomic, monatomic and uh, diatomic and polyatomic gases because these are uh, fairly uh, new things to students of chemistry for whom this course is uh, designed. And uh, uh, so, in chemistry we do a large amount of body of work on phase transition uh, you know, from the beginning of chemistry you know from van der Waals theory of gases from phase transition, gas to liquid transition. See in our even uh, undergraduate chemistry, there is a big, big uh, chapters and uh, on phase equilibrium, uh, phase transition and precipitation in chemistry, physical chemistry, organic chemistry laboratory, we are all the, all the time doing melting uh, as a taste uh, of a purity and identification. So, phase transition very dear to a you know, physical chemist and physical chemist is uh, mandated to explain these things. Now, there is always this curiosity to why, uh, how the raindrops form, how gas goes to liquid, then of course, how ice melts and uh, water goes into ice. What are the molecular processes? These are omnipresent, they are all around us, but it turned out explanation of them, understanding of them challenged the intellectual ability of man to a very high degree. And the people and the scientists who are involved in doing this are some of the best minds of that we have produced in entire civilization. So, I already described and I hope you spend some time and I encourage you to spend more time in understanding Mayer's theory, how intermolecular interactions entered the picture to Mayer a function which gives us video series and also tells us how one can envisage or picture gas to liquid transition as small, small clusters in the in the in, in a room like for instance in this room, small, small clusters coagulate together to form a gigantic big cluster, almost the size of the total number of particles of the system, which is the liquid phase, which is the correct picture. Uh, it is that exactly what happens that when a gas goes into liquid, then many, many clusters of smaller size, quite small size actually can be clusters of the size of only maybe 20, 30 molecules, not more than that. But many, many of those clusters, most of them still monomer and dimer, they coalesce together in a very short temperature span to form a gigantic cluster of avocado number of molecules. This happened in so sharply and it was such a short temperature range that it, we call it a singularity. We call it that the properties, thermodynamic properties diverge. For example, you calculate specific heat, it diverges. So, phase transition has then characteristics of this divergence that things just uh, fantastic things happen. But then how do I explain these fantastic things? Mayers told us, okay, think in terms of small, small clusters and they suddenly come together to become big clusters. But I told you the Mayers theory, however beautiful it is, it breaks down because we do not get the cluster integrals, three level cluster integrals. We, he told us how to do these things, but those things are very difficult. We cannot do even now, today we cannot calculate irreducible cluster integrals for inner zone systems of something more than the size of the, say for example, 10 particles together. There is a huge number of graphs that come in which cannot be evaluated and uh, 10 particles doubly connected will be 30 dimensional integral, it is just is not possible. Actually, people in Earth Jones have done only up to 6, that by Lee and Hoover who did this uh, beautiful work, you know landmark work in about 30 years ago, but nothing more has, uh, has been done after that. However, at the 1937, 38 around the same time, when Mayer was developing his game changing theory of in terms of graph theory, in terms of clusters, in terms of cluster integrals. 
uh, one brilliant physicist called Landau. Landau was developing a simple phenological theory to describe the uh, phase transition and this is called order parameter theory that went on to become the main stream of phase transition study that went on to develop many languages and went on to giving probably top 10 or 15 Nobel prizes in this area of phase transition. So, we will briefly describe Landau theory, we did it once before, but I am going to do it again probably somewhat from different perspective and uh, and as I as I, I, I go on this way I will go, I will repeat things uh, goes, we will go a little advanced then go back and then again go forward. So, in that way as I said painting uh, is a way to learn uh, things. So, this is a uh, this our uh, picture of Landau, uh, the great Landau and uh, did many many things and this is kind of a free energy diagram uh, which came was inspired by Landau that if gas to liquid high temperature in the temperature large it is gas where molecules are far from each other, but in a liquid the molecules are bigger. So, this is the kind of droplet the small clusters from Mayer's theory in this one gigantic cluster that forms at the phase transition. But look at that there is a barrier it has to go over the barrier and this free energy by going around the free energy barrier is also a very difficult process. But the appearance of this double minimum is the essence of the Landau theory and this when the plotting free energy against the appropriate quantity on the x axis with free energy y axis is called Landau's uh, land, energy landscape. So, we will now do. So, this is kind of thing from the book that phase transition ubiquitous it manifests a large and very important thing of phase transition large experimentally detectable change large change macroscopic change. So, macroscopic change, but the macroscopic change takes place in point is small change that means I change I something very small, but something very big happens that means this is a small change in a control parameter leads to huge change like the temperature at uh, 100 degree centigrade. I just make it, I reach 99.9 .9 and make 100, that 0 0.1 degree centigrade leads to huge change. Similarly, ice 0 degree centigrade, I make it 0 0.1 degree centigrade, ice melts. So, the real thing to emphasize and note that, that infinitesimal change, infinitesimal change leads to a macroscopic change in specific heat enthalpy, entropy of uh, parts of the system. This is the subject of phase transition. This is in great, great importance in most branches of natural and biological science like it, helix coil transition in uh, DNA and protein, protein folding these are kind of a cooperative phenomena. So, what is the language here the degree that the classification that is that many many molecules kind of acting together collectively to give rise to this act of macroscopic change. So, this is one of the most fascinating fields of condensed matter science or natural science that how molecules talk with each other, the molecules collectively change over from one phase like gas phase to another phase like liquid phase. So, how do I understand that? May I try to understand from intermolecular potential that is detail that gives us some picture how things are happening, but that fails to give us to uh, fails to describe the generality of the phenomena. So, we need a description which is simpler, but which is general which captures the essence of this macroscopic change in a in a thermodynamic property due to microscopic change in infinitesimal change in a control parameter like temperature or density. So, that is what Landau did. So, I, I, I described it before, but I will describe it a little bit more uh, physically this time. So, Phase transition are very common liquid liquid, they are solid, they are magnetic transition, ferromagnetic, paramagnetic transition, ferroelectric, and all these things. Well known examples are all order, these are many, many phase transitions here. So, then we study, then do we ask with three questions what is what, why, and how? What are the characteristics of the phenomena? What is a phase transition? Why does it happen? That is a why. How does it happen? So, how essentially brings the dynamics which we will do later not today and that we will describe why it happens. How do I describe in terms of phase transition 
like I go back to Emirates, where Emirates says clusters come together. But how does it happen manifested in, uh, I, how do I describe in free energy? This is what Landau did. And so, Landau said, so, so there is again take it, they, they, I, I, this will be given to you. There is a large number of examples. Paramagnetic fermion phase transition, liquid solid, gas liquid, order disorder in a, uh, very common in solid phase like um, alloys, uh, binary mixtures again they phase separate in, in polymers, in superconductivity, in superfluidity, solvent, helix coil there is just phase transition is all around us and you have to give proper importance to phase transition. Not just because it is all around us, but phase transition brings in, introduces some of the most common and most useful language to uh, physical science. This is something we learn from like the concept of order parameter, the concept of singularity uh, and these languages free energy expansion, uh, free energy landscape, the, all the language you routinely use they started in this field of phase transition. So, I am talking a very elementary language, but those were the newcomers this is a, I must emphasize, this is a very, very important thing. So, these are the examples waste transition, let me go through. So, uh, the, all these examples, this is my favorite, is huge, is, is characterized by discontinuous, characterized by discontinuous change of macroscopic variables, that is finite change of a macroscopic variable due to infinitesimal change. So, the thing to know finite large scale change due to infinitesimal change, small change in some variable and this is the hallmark of phase transition. So, if you say what is a phase transition, then this is a phase transition, what? This is the definition of a phase transition, what? So, the I explained why. Now, these are the examples, we already did pressure against density. In Mayer's theory, you know this, then we always uh, ask this in the our interview of undergraduate students and then we ask pressure versus plot pressure versus temperature plane and this is solid, liquid and gas, gas here and in, in our classroom we find really very interesting things, we have students put gas here, solid here and liquid here and all kinds of things they do, mm, but this is the phase diagram. So, this pressure temperature, plane, this is the triple point and this is the critical point, you know all these things. Then the another rep representation, so there are three representation, this temperature against density, then this another temperature, so this is the gas liquid coexistence, then this beautiful way goes, so this is the solid. So, I can describe the same phenomena in three ways, each says something very interesting and new, like here it says when this kind of Vandewa's loop or the kind of spinodal or instability, here it the coexist, these are the coexistence line. These are the lines along which gas and liquid can coexist, liquid and solid coexist, solid and gas sublimation across that, that coexist. And here it says how gas liquid crystals are showing together in a beautiful way, including the, this, this in, in parabolic shape, in inverse parabolic shape, and the, uh, which is showing you the, the bell shape, which is showing you the critical point and all these things. So, these are the three representations. So, phase transition deals with this kind of graph. This is for gas liquid, the simple thing. I can draw identical thing for almost magnetic systems. Now, as I said, one of the very important contribution of the phase transition that goes on to many different fields of uh, uh, condensed matter science or even uh, protein folding or any other things is the order parameter. What is an order parameter? An order parameter is chosen as a quantity which is 0 before the transition, but becomes non-zero afterwards. A clear example is provided by liquid solid transition, where is the order, also magnetic transition, that is the magnetization is an order parameter. So, a system in uh, is 0 magnetization, non-magnetic before the transition, after the magnetic point becomes ferromagnetic, its magnetization goes up large. So, now gas liquid or liquid solid, the entropy is uh, so this is solid, this is liquid entropy diverging, then you look at specific heat that is diverging. So, order parameter is a quantity that is 0 before the transition becomes non-zero. If solids we will have some more examples there, for example, if I show liquid solid, so there is a random system then that becomes periodic and periodic I can expand it in reciprocal that is vectors, you know this is expansion, 
and this is the fractional density change and these quantities are the connected revival of factor, but these are the, these are the order parameters. So, in this example phi naught phi g are the order parameters. Then in the gas liquid transition it is the rho liquid minus rho gas that is the order parameter. Magnetic and ferromagnetic transition magnetization is the order parameter, gas liquid is difference, liquid solid is the phi naught phi g order parameter, solid is viscosity is the order parameter. So, it is a quantity which is 0 before the transition becomes non-zero after the transition. This was Landau definition. Now, why did Landau define it? Why did Landau define it? Okay, Landau defined it um, because Landau had in mind to describe a phase transition. So, Landau was looking for a quantity. See, in 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 physics, when you want to describe a change, we want to quantify the change. Why you want to quantify change? Why? Because if I describe a free energy, then I want a smallest parameter. The smallest parameter is the one that I can expand free energy about and that smallest parameter is the order parameter. It is something which is 0 and then become non-zero. So, I can do a Taylor expansion in the smallest parameter. So, order parameter becomes the smallest parameter in my Taylor expansion and that was the idea of Landau and that is a very beautiful idea that now there was when this was done. Uh, this is another brilliant uh, physicist name is Ehrenfest. Ehrenfest came up with it. Yeah, he noticed something very interesting. He noticed that that the there are some phase transitions where entropy undergoes a jump, like melting, and then liquid solid transition away from the critical uh, gas liquid transition away from the critical point. There is a jump, like you know, you know, in water pipe, uh, 40 kilocal per mole kilocal per gram for gas liquid, 80 kilocal per gram for calorie gram or kilo, I do not forget, those, but they are finite change. However, when you go to critical point, then specifically it diverges, uh, no change in latency and then magnetic transition, uh, paramagnetic ferromagnetic transition, if in the absence of a magnetic field, it is a, a transition which is again continuous, but has this divergence, peculiar behavior, superfluidity has this uh, peculiar transition. Then order disorder transition solids like uh, 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 brass had shows these characteristics. This shows these characteristics where second order properties of free energy undergoes divergence. But in the melting is the first order property is entropy is the first derivative of free energy. So, first order property means when I have an order parameter and I control parameter, I change that control parameter, first derivative of free energy becomes discontinuous. So, Aaron first said let me now define capture this universality across the phase transitions that first order phase transition are those phase transitions where first derivative of the free energy is discontinuous and second order was the second uh, derivative of the free energy with respect to order parameter or control parameter become discontinuous. Suddenly everything kind of falls in place. Oh, I do, now I say when I say first order phase transition, I know the characteristics of first order phase transition. Whatever that the material is, is the gas liquid transition I from the critical point or melting or uh, magnetic transition in the presence of a magnetic field all have the same characteristics. Similarly, in a uh, second order phase transition, it is second derivative of free energy, but most of the second order phase transition actually continuous transition like the critical point and superfluid transition except one. There is one truly second order phase transition in the end phase sense, the second uh, derivative is shows it is continuity and that is the most important transition is a superconductivity. But however, there are all these little qualifications here and there, but Aaron first introduced a very powerful paradigm saying the order of a phase transition following all the definition of order. Now, Landau theory comes in beautifully. Landau says, okay, I now know, I know I, I can describe the free energy and I can describe the, um, uh, so this is the hysteresis and metastability, then what shows in the presence of a magnetic field. So, I, I, I H is the magnetic field and is the magnetization M. I, I change the size, however, be, behold that I am uh, uh, switching the size, but even after switching, it does not reverse immediately, it hang on and then go. Again. While in, in while again switch the other way around, it is a long time. So, this the hanging on on the old phase is called metastability and hysteresis and this is a trademark of first order phase transition. Second order phase transitions never show metastability or hysteresis. This is very, very important. 
and this is what led Landau to develop this beautiful theory. So, again come back why does a system source size search change? What is the origin of discontinuity? Then how can we calculate? How can we calculate? How can we evaluate the transition parameters like, like latency? What are the order parameters? Then why liquid sodium goes to BCC and why argon goes to FCC? These are the questions one would like to answer. And this is where Landau now came in. Landau, these are the things stability analysis that when does one system become stable and one talks of convexity and concavity like for example, I draw the line between the two minima, then if the curve linear, then it is convex, however, if it lies below, then it is concave. So, from stability to metastable, uh, stable phase to metastable, you will have everywhere this convexity, but however, the other early will have the concavity. So, these kind of things analysis done in terms of first and second derivatives as the energy is done here, but that is very interesting, but uh, uh, not the the stability analysis and it essentially go back the specific heat has to be and I told you that specific heat nothing but delta E square 0 is the average of a fluctuation and square of a fluctuation. Fluctuation can be positive or negative, but square has to be positive always. So, specific heat has to be always, always positive quantity and that is a stability condition. So, minus CBD by 0 that means CP must be positive. These are very, this con concave function and concave function that I uh, described here. You, you can read it and this and we have done it little bit before, but you can do it yourself. But now I go to Landau theory and in 5 or 10 minutes that I have, I will just describe Landau theory. Landau theory is a beautiful theory which is based on the order parameter. Landau theory is a free energy expansion in the order parameter. Landau theory is the basis of almost all theories. This is a phenomenological theory, but it is a beautiful theory. And so, is a mean, it is sometimes called mean field theory because some kind of fluctuations are neglected. But it is so main merit of the Landau theory that it introduced it, it, it taught us to think in terms of order parameter, talk of the minima in free energy and free energy landscape. So, this is the Landau uh, free energy expansion. So, Landau said once it defined the order parameter, Landau said, okay, now I know I can expand free energy. So, you went ahead and expand free energy in terms of this order parameter, eta is the order parameter. He said, okay, I am just a Taylor expansion. I want to describe this is the free energy of the new phase, this is the free energy of old phase, this is new, this is old and he wrote down the Taylor expansion that all of us know the Taylor expansion right. Uh, very simple Taylor expansion. Now we know Taylor expansion, we know now Taylor expansion if I have to give alpha, I will take dfd, dfd eta at uh, the old phase and I get alpha the way we do the. Uh, extrapolation and interpolation of a function. But um, in my case, that first derivative of order parameter free energy, but free energy has to be minimum because it has to be stable. That is why we did all the stability analysis. Then what does it mean? That means this quantity cannot be there, alpha has to be 0 because the free energy of the whole phase must be minimum. But uh, how do I, the, but that does not apply to this. So I can now get the secondary AT. I can get AT by taking this um, second derivative of free energy and then evaluate it in the old phase. That is what we tell our expansion, we take the derivative, but evaluate it in the old phase. O, A, T, B and all these quantities are temperature dependent and they are obtained in terms of the old phase free energy. And now, so this is now land of free energy by introducing this condition. And eta is my order parameter, which is used as a smallness variable in expansion. This is just beautiful. Now, what did Landau do now? Okay, this again I am writing this thing. He then said, okay, let us think of beta stability and let me think in terms of uh, hysteresis. So, if there is to be hysteresis, then I must be that when I am hitting this, the, uh, there should be a minimum. So, it is getting stuck in the minimum. And though I am, this uh, new phase is more stable, old phase still remain a minimum. So, that explains metastability. What does that mean? That means I have this kind of structure of free energy. That means I have one deeper minimum, one less deep minimum. How do I get such a minimum? I can get such minimum by keeping the odd terms. 
However, in critical, so this is the first order phase transition where I need to have these odd terms. I will not talk of these things, I will just talk of this fourth uh, up to fourth power. However, in a critical phenomena, there is no metastability, there is no such a, no hysteresis. So, do minimum odd, then how does second order phase transition, the so important uh, transitions in a critical phenomena, then magnetic transitions happens. That then he is argued very nicely. He said, okay, uh, that happens in the following fashion. He said, in that case, the uh, one minima that becomes flat and it becomes increasingly flat. And then it just becomes a two phase the same. So, if I go to this critical phenomena point, uh, temperature against density in gas liquid or binary mixture, I am coming down like that. Then the minima in the gas phase, there is a gas, minima in the gas phase is becoming flatter. So, remember second derivative of free energy is the compressibility that diverges it becomes infinite energy compressible and that then then suddenly when you go below the critical point two minima appear that of the gas of the liquid. Look at the symmetry, this is called the symmetry breaking transition. So, how do I describe that now? Okay. In the second order phase transition, I go back to my Landau theory of this expansion, I will come back this little bit later and then I say okay, there is a the new phase I am going to describe has the symmetry that at plus eta and minus eta free energy is the same, this is called parity. Then this is going to, when I said that odd terms disappear, I it remain only the even terms. And in the even terms, there is a very important quantity now. This is the free energy old term, the A is the quantity that is the spin constant because this is the harmonic. If I forget for a moment of this thing, this is the thing that gives rise to this uh, two minima, but before two minima, my uh, my this is becoming flatter, my getting flatter. Who describes that? This quantity describes the flat. That means this quantity, which is the spring constant, which holds the system together, which is second derivative of free energy, is becoming smaller and smaller. How do I describe that? And this is the brilliance of Landau. Landau said, "Okay, let us assume that happens linearly." The happy ones that this A temperature dependence goes to 0 as critical temperature is approached and that goes so he assumed T minus Tc and this is given by the time derivative of the free energy, temperature derivative of the free energy. Okay. Now, it changes sign in uh, um, this quantity now changes sign at Tc, this becomes uh, this is the second derivative of the order parameter. But first there will be this temperature. Now, if, because this, this quantity is compressibility, so it has that is why it is a second order phase transition we are talking. So, this quantity now is made to change sign. So, as soon as they are changed sign, this my it become minus and become plus that gives rise to this thing. So, this is the Landau essential. Then one goes on and doing uh, this okay, this then one solve for eta. We take the if I these are two minima. Then that satisfies the minimum condition that means derivative of uh, df d eta has to be 0 and then I uh, do this uh, this term, uh, this quantity, this quantity and this a I put a equal to t minus tc and I take the derivative and I get this and eta equal to 0 is the maximum which is this, this solution, the trivial solution, but then I get two values. One is for this one and this, this one equal plus and minus. However, the beauty is that this order parameter, this value, the value from here to here where the minima scales in this funny way Tc minus T to the power half. This is a critical exponent or exponent of the uh, a um, called critical exponent or Landau exponent or mean field exponent that is something more needs to be done. So, this is Landau theory of critical phenomena, then one can go on second order phase transition, one can many many things are like that magnetic transition, 
weekly first order phase transition, then uh, um, uh, superconductivity, isotopic pneumatics, MECT is weekly first order almost second order phase transition, order disorder is a second order phase transition, gas liquid at critical point is a second order phase transition. There are huge number of things that happens in the second order phase transition. So, sorry, I have to now go back and do little bit. So, this is the way second order phase. First order phase transition is done like Van der Waals. Now, we have, we have, we cannot ignore the cubic term, we cannot ignore this term because that gives rise to metastability. And one can again go back and do one thing Van der Waals gas, we can do that. So, this is the Van der Waals equation, the free energy starting from this equation, I can integrate because free energy is. Uh, dvp and put this then i can get the free energy uh, and that is this quantity now i do what landau told us to do i had one expansion in density density is order parameter i told you gas liquid transition then i get this beautiful thing which is nothing but the various series and that now describes this phase transition and now and describes the free energy that one can show that this is essentially very much this is the ideal gas part and this is the part that describes this free energy uh, with one deeper than the other the asymmetry in the first order phase transition from land uh, uh, learning from land how to do it go back to van der Waals and we can describe that okay so i think this is the we'll uh, stop here today this beautiful area of uh, uh, phase transition i have done it little bit before i did more now May many things i forgot and to say in the first time to give you students more physical insight, but now I have done it here a little bit more. So, from now we will go on to doing few more things in phase transition in the next class, one or two more class will be on phase transition, then we will go back again to do statistical mechanics of what the, the what we will do in phase transition essentially will be simple, will be phenomenological Landau theory because of the generality, it is so general the, the things of phase transition that it is better to have a very general description. That means, we need not talk of intermolecular interactions like Mayer did. When you talk of intermolecular interactions, we are, we are demanding much more. We are doing so much more work, we need to then get the exactly the values of parameters like latent heat with the, what are the order parameters. Then it is okay justified to do a very detailed calculation, but then each calculation has to be for each phase transition. I want to do a melting transition, I have to do theory for melting. Well, still Landau theory in the background, but I, I have to freezing that will be different from melting because the phenomena, though they are thermodynamically or reverse of each other, stat mag they are very different because liquid is going to crystal is different from crystal going to liquid. But if I want to do in terms of thermodynamics, the general parameter, then again Landau theory is concerned. Then Mayer's theory as is so such a detailed theory. So, the goal is different and our work is different our these things are extremely connected to each other and a scientist, a physical chemist or physicist knows what is time and, and then develops the theory particular to the need of the time, the need of the moment. Okay, thank you. We will see you in the next class.